you if you are heading up there today. I'll have the details as KEGI 9 News at 4 begins right now. Live, local, late breaking. This is KEZI 9 News at 4. For almost a full year now, Oregonians have been required to mask up every time they leave their homes, but that's all changing now. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Carly Tinsley. Today, businesses are shifting gears after the governor's announcement, leaving many Oregonians wondering who can take off their mask and when and where it's okay to do so. We have team coverage tonight to break it all down, and we begin with KEZI 9 News reporter Mike Cerullo, who spoke to several business owners today about what the new rules mean for them. Mike, how are they handling the new guidelines. Well, Carly, almost every business owner I spoke to today says they're confused about the sudden change in guidelines. Now, here at Eugene True Value Hardware, one of the owners tells me they're still planning to require masks in the store for now. But that could all change when the Oregon Health Authority and Oregon OSHA release new mask guidelines specifically for businesses. That's expected to happen in the near future. Looking specifically at Lane County, the current policy requires businesses to continue the mask mandate. Here, Terry White says he's doing exactly that. The CDC surprised everybody yesterday, and uh, I don't think anyone was prepared for what happened, and so uh, the businesses haven't been told anything yet. So and until we are, we're, nothing has changed. Many business owners I spoke with today say they've gotten a lot of questions from customers about the new mask rules, many of which they aren't able to answer because no clear guidance has been issued from the Oregon OSHA or the Oregon Health Authority. And coming up in the five o'clock hour, I'll have news from a local gym that's planning to allow customers to breathe a little easier. Reporting live in Eugene, Mike Cerullo, KEZI 9 News. Mike, thank you. And now we know the plan for one of our school districts in the future. Roseburg Public Schools will have a full return to in-person learning for all grade levels this fall. They'll be open full time five days a week. The district expects to continue receiving updated guidance from the Department of Education and the Oregon Health Authority on safety measures for schools, and they will provide regular updates to students and families, which you can find on roseburg.k12.or.us. And continuing with our team coverage, now in the CDC's new mask mandate, there are some places that won't see much of a change. KEZI 9 News reporter Chris Lindsay is live in Eugene to speak with some businesses that are sticking with their approach due to the CDC's guidelines. Chris. Yes, that's right, Carly. Regardless of if you are vaccinated or not, if you want to take any form of public transportation, you must wear your mask. In fact, Oregon is continuing to require masks at hospitals, health care clinics, long-term health care facilities, and correct facilities. I spoke with Pat Walsh, the Lane Transit District. He says the mask rule applies before you even step foot on the bus. Even if you're standing at the station waiting for a bus, you still need to wear a mask and, and, and observe social distancing. That's that's true for everyone. And as we continue to make progress, Governor Brown cautions those who are immunocompromised to follow their doctor's orders. Coming up at five, hear from airport officials about their stance on the new mask rule. Reporting live in Eugene, Chris Lindsay, KZI 9 News. Chris, thank you. Money is coming to local colleges and universities from the American Rescue Plan. The $130 million will help with the economic impact of the pandemic, helping students and the job campuses that they provide. Now, OSU is getting over $46 million. U of O is getting over $42 million. LCC gets over $15 million. Lynn Benton Community College gets over $10 million. And UCC will get over $4 million. And Bushnell will get a little over $1 million. The state government is moving forward with plans to fund K-12 public schools. Senate Bill 5514 will invest $9.3 billion into the schools this year. Lawmakers will finalize decisions on what funding sources will be used to reach that $9.3 billion number. Governor Brown, the Senate President and the House Speaker said they're committed to centering public education on equity and look to address the impact COVID had on minorities in Oregon. They will work with education leaders and leaders from communities of color to identify actions they can take to reach these goals. 
The 4J school district will be holding multiple in-person and online commencement ceremonies due to COVID. Now, the in-person events will be for those who choose to participate. Schools must hold multiple events to comply with the limits on the number of participants. Now, the number of visitors will depend on the county's risk levels, and you can find details on your school's graduation dates and times on the 4J website. The Oregon Health Authority reported 713 new cases today, bringing our statewide total to over 194,000. The OHA also reported 10 new deaths, raising our death toll to 2,582. And teens have an opportunity to get vaccinated in Douglas County this weekend. The county is holding another mass vaccination clinic tomorrow for anyone who is 12 years old and older. This will be the first mass vaccination event county officials have opened up to 12 through 15 year olds. Some Douglas residents say they're excited the younger population has the opportunity to get the shot. Being fully vaccinated is the best. I can finally be around my grandkids and hug them without a mask and I can see my family again. The clinic will be held at the Douglas County Fairgrounds from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Public health officials say they will be giving out doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Appointments are still available on the Douglas Public Health Network website, or you can just walk right in. And with all the places you can get vaccinated, we want to make it easy for you to find your place and options in our viewing area. Just go to our website, kezi.com, and click on the link that says when and where can I get my vaccine. There you'll find all of the vaccine information for nearby counties. Now, your first forecast with Chief Meteorologist Dylan Robichaud. Wow, if you look off to the east today, you can see those thunderstorm clouds across the Cascades. And I want to show you the time lapse from Eugene of how those developed earlier today. So at 10 o'clock in the morning, we're looking east here. You don't really see much, if anything. But look at this as we progress through the afternoon and we get closer to lunchtime. You can see as we get that daytime heating, that instability. Look at this right here. Bam, it's just like... Uh, the floodgates opening up and here come those thunderstorm heads and you can see that as we go throughout the afternoon they get bigger and bigger and bigger and we are looking at some rain and showers out of those storms. Notice how the valley and the Umpqua Basin completely dry right now. It's more so off to the east that we are tracking this slew of showers. A lot of lightning too, very heavy on the lightning. And zooming into Oak Ridge, these storms are roughly 15 miles from Oak Ridge. So if you're heading east on Highway 58, that will definitely affect you. Also, Highway 126, be cautious traveling. You'll be looking at some heavy downpours there. And Highway 20, same thing for you as well. As we head toward the evening hours, by 6 and 7 p.m., a lot of the storms are gone. We clear out overnight tonight. Tomorrow morning, here comes the fog up and down the coast. The valley in the Umpqua Basin looking at a very sunny and dry weekend. A Douglas County man has purchased a piece of property near downtown Roseburg in hopes of turning it into a recreational paradise. The 25-acre Elk Island that sits below the Reservoir Hill was purchased by longtime Roseburg resident Bernard Woodard and his property management group, Elk Island Trading. He says he's been eyeing the property for a long time and has made efforts in the past to clean up the space. Woodward says he already has an idea of what he wants to do with it. Oak Island will eventually be a, a potential fishing resort uh, from a bridge from Pine Street Overlay and tree houses, uh, elevated yurts, seasonal camping, zip lines, all kinds of fun recreational things for the community. Woodard says they will spend the next year cleaning up Elk Island. He says he also hopes to recruit some homeless people to help in exchange for temporarily living on the island.